Hello and welcome back to my Twitch live streaming of KSP's Hard Career Mode. What you're about to see was recorded on June 7th and has been edited for YouTube. I'm currently interspersing this career mode streaming with other KSP activities on Twitch, which will not be posted to YouTube, so hopefully this YouTube version will catch up to the live streams before, say, KSP 1.1 comes out. With that, on to my commentary from June 7th. Okay, let's get things started. Hello everybody. And we have to bring Sidri Kerman back, is the first order of business. Uh, so I'll uh, take the time when people are trickling in to time warp to the right phase angle for Sidri's return. Okay, so just waiting for 48 degrees and then we'll bring Sidri back home. And then my next plan is to develop a reusable launcher. We've already got one. We've got the mainsail SSTO, but we can do more. Uh, that one has a capacity of 9 tons. I want something a little bit larger now. Wow, the the little uh, heat indicators are still going on this. I'm surprised to see that. Well, at least we still have some up later. That's interesting. Yeah, end up in a high orbit like this. This doesn't take too much, thankfully. I guess the main thing is to not have, well, it really doesn't matter. This inclination isn't going to be a big deal. We got to end up with some of it anyway. Well, we're about to find out whether Sidri actually gets to come home today. Much can still go wrong, after all. Blader is still melting away, actually. I wonder why, I thought we had stabilized a blade her yesterday, but now it's going down again. We're actually this vehicle here. So again, if you're just joining, I'm planning to try and design a larger reusable launcher. We've already got the main CLSSTO, and I want something a little bit bigger for future missions. Obviously, we for, this, uh, for all the leaf stuff and jewel stuff, we've been using launchers that aren't reusable, so... I think maybe coming up with something a little bit more efficient would be great. The Mars Special Prep is... Uh, well, I've, I've built the vehicles. And uh, th there's a big problem. The big problem is the return vehicle coming back from Mars. Now, uh, so I've sort of been able to land the Mars Ascent vehicle on Mars. It's not very safe. Uh, one problem is... Uh, getting it anywhere near the habitat, uh, or getting the ascent vehicle and habitat close to each other. There's basically three components to uh, the Mars mission, right? There's uh, there's a Mars ascent vehicle, there's a habitat, and then there is a return vehicle. And so, the landing them close to each other is one problem, and then the other problem is the return vehicle being too big. The, um, I mean, when you think about it, if you're just going to have a little capsule, that's not going to be much room for the passengers for a 180-day trip minimum. It's a minimum 180-day trip. So you need some sort of larger habitat for them. But if you have a larger habitat for them, it turns out that it doesn't fit on the, on the SLS-1B very well. So I would need a different... Uh, I would need the Block 2 the SLS Block 2 to bring them back. And on the side of that, I also uh, was thinking about maybe doing my first ever Jewel, uh, EVE landing mission uh, in stock, not in real solar system realism overhaul. The problem with that is I'm still not... I, I can get the Delta V and everything, that's fine. The problem is I'm not satisfied with the look of the launcher. So it's, it's the EDB problem. It's not a very elegant design. We're in a very good place. Uh, we're sort of hitting the descending node there. So that's nice, but tweaking this orbit is really tough. Tweaking the maneuver, I mean. Oh yeah, you just saw that video, huh? The honey badger aesthetics, yeah. That annoyed the heck out of me. That was so unfair. Yeah, the Honey Badger and the Colonization series, that is one ugly, ugly thing. And you can't really put stuff radially. 
I mean, you're gonna have to put eight of them if you want to attach things radially, and then it'll be bound to block something. Reminds you of red, red, yeah, yeah, it's a red dwarf, it, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a rust bucket. Uh, a useful rust bucket, but still. Well, I think I should focus on, uh, on Kerbin now. Fine tune this thing. No, no, don't set Bop as anything. Ah, don't do that. It's so totally messing with me there. It should be getting it closer, but no. Ah! Oh, come on. KSP's not playing fair. Okay, I'm just going to do this sort of thing and we'll adjust on the burn. Seems like it hit a moon? Not really. I, I wasn't in line with the moon or Minmus. I mean, it might seem that might have seemed that way, but I wasn't really in line with anything. All right, let me do the burn. Oh, moon of jewel. Uh, moon of jewel. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, well, it's possible Tylo. Yeah, Tylo could do it. All right, let's proceed with uh, what we've got, and then we'll make adjustments as we go along. We've got the delta V. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it's actually taking less time than that, but I'll just keep going. Sidri sad for leaving his home for years. <laughs> no, well, I don't know. He looks pretty happy, actually. I imagine he's happy to get back home. How long has he been stuck out there? Uh, well, no less than three years, <laughs> but three Kerbin years. I don't know how else, uh, yeah, I don't know how to figure that out. We'd have to jump to uh, his original vehicle, I suppose. Okay, what just happened there? It's not a moon. Just suddenly lost it, okay. Yeah, three years for the uh, for this rescue vehicle. Remember, there was a previous rescue vehicle. So, much longer than three years. Hmm. So maybe a little bit more like this. Nope, that doesn't look right. Okay, I'll adjust it outside. Yep, I will adjust it in uh, orbit around the sun. Okay, anyway, let's... Let's proceed out of Jules Sphere Influence, finally. And let us make sure that we are oriented properly to get maximum solar input. Where are you, sun? There you are. Okay, here we are, interplanetary space, and now I'll just make a maneuver here to fix things. And let's focus again on Kerbin. Well, that gets us closer, but it does. I, I can't fine-tune it. It seems like we're at the wrong angle here. Oh, default track. Okay, we'll do this right now. You will use the propagate marker first. You mean prograde? Yeah, well, I happen to know that prograde would not be a good thing here, so... I mean, it, it was partly useful, but it's not really good here. But yeah, you're right, uh, usually the order of operations is prograde first, then inclination, then radio. But... But sometimes it's not. I think that'll be about the minimum. Oh, no, it's getting us closer. Okay, actually we can do that. Wow, okay. Looks good. 
Crash Course. Use the moon to decelerate you. Too complicated. Not not necessary. Okay. Here we go. But there's still quite a bit of uncertainty when it comes to Sidri's survival. We haven't actually brought a craft back from Jewel like this. I don't know what kind of heating he's going to get. Nor what kind of periapsis I should set on the curb, curb inside to avoid too much heating and, you know, stuff that might cause disasters. We've sure got a lot of stuff that could blow up, it seems. Judging from the little, uh... Temperature warnings. Using the moon to slingshot will reduce the risk of heating and aero braking. Yeah, that's true. Well, once we get there, we can see what we want to do. I'm not going to adjust it from out here, though. We've got plenty of fuel. We've got a little bit left in this poodle stage, and then the entire probably 2,000 plus Delta V in the actual trend this this stage the rescue vehicle stage so thinking about a larger launch vehicle I'm thinking about something with four mainsails at the bottom and there are a number of ways of configuring that I'm expecting that that would give us more than 30 tons and still be reusable. 30 tons to orbit and still be reusable. Probably closer to 40 tons. If I have 2000 Delta V it's possible to avoid air braking. Yes, I thought of that. It's also possible to bring it right down on the KSC uh, if I wanted to. But uh, we're not really recovering that much by way of funds. It's probably better not to air brake and... Uh, yeah, I agree. The, quest, the question is whether we want to test what the air braking altitude is. Are we going to risk Sidri's well-being in order to check what the, what the re-entry situation from Jewel is? Because there's a rare opportunity to do that. Uh, we do not get scientific information by just simply using the engine to air brake, uh, to, not air brake, to slow down. But that is a decision I have yet to make. It looks like you guys would like to see us just keep Sidri as safe as possible, which is fair enough. Sidri has suffered, suffered enough, yeah. Okay, so there's our current situation. We can, we can manage a, a manual break pretty easily. We just have to lift our orbit a little bit right now. But uh, we are going quite, quite fast. I don't think we have the Delta V f to do all of it. All, uh, we go a little bit high. I don't think... I mean, we, we're going 3,000 now. By this point... Well, actually, we can see. Uh, no, no. Um... No, not that. I want to focus view on Kerbin, you silly thing. Oh well. Anyway, let's see the exact delta V we need in order to get into any kind of orbit. Oh, okay, it's not that bad. Yeah, I think we can do a manual burn to get into orbit. So, what we're going to do is keep our periapsis out of Kerbin's atmosphere for now. Not too far out. That'll do just fine. Correct inclination, I don't think it's necessary. I'm not wedded to the idea of bringing him back to the KSC right now. Let's just get him back. Okay, close to home now. Yeah, I'm in the atmosphere, it's not... Yeah, but 
We're in a non-deadly atmosphere, how about that? <laughs> we're, we're barely in the atmosphere. We will want to be getting into the atmosphere eventually with this, right? We're, we're not uh, too worried. I, I would rather be coming down on the daylight side, though. But having it in the atmosphere on one side does provide a little bit of insurance, just in case we for some reason decide to use up all of our fuel unnecessarily. That will be bad, right? But it doesn't look like we're gonna come close to that. We're sort of on the Terminator, aren't we? Both sides of our orbit are in dark. That's really counter to my intention here. Don't worry, I'll boost up the periapsis. Okay, I'm gonna cut there. I guess we'll try to get at least close to the KSC, so we'll have him in orbit a few times before before we bring him down. I hope it doesn't drive him crazy to be this close to home and be left in orbit for a little while. He seems alright. Yes, this is the end of yesterday's rescue mission. Yep. And my plan is after this to try and build a new launch vehicle. And I'm going to have fairings on it because people insisted I should be using fairings and we'll have wing parts. We are going to make a heavy launch, reusable launch vehicle that, uh, that will not flip over. <laughs> so uh, we're going to work on that. Okay, right around here. I'm going to retro burn. Ah. Really don't want my periapsis dipping right there. You've been breathing the same oxygen for like six years, yeah. Okay, uh, well, I don't want... We, we'll uh, keep the service module in the top part of the atmosphere, it looks like. Let's just uh, not have the solar panels out now. May keep fuel for power landing in case the chute fails. Trouble with this is that... I, I'd like to, but we, we know this thing overheats like... Well, then again, it was Leif going at 5,000 meters per second. Oh, music just went ominous on me. I'm worried about mountains in particular. I mean, right now we're not going to be at any risk of mountains, but... Let me get us to our periapsis here. Even if it explodes, it won't destroy the capsule? Not entirely sure, uh... Not entirely sure I want to see whether it will or not. Should be going down by now, shouldn't it? It looked like it was... Oh, oh no, uh, our apoapsis is coming around here, okay. Once we're over water, I can retroburn, but... Can't rightly see whether we're over water or not. Oh wait, uh, there's a coastline there. Yep, that's a coastline. That's the coastline of the home continent right there. Okay, let's retro burn. Fire the monoprop. Uh, yeah, we could do that too. Land west of the KSC. No, I want to land east of the KSC. I want to land in the ocean. I did not want to land on land because the land is bumpy. I've made this descent sharper than usual. Then again, this vehicle has survived quite a bit more than this. 
Got some little temperature gauges here. Gotta switch up the staging. We gotta try and bring it all down together. Okay, not bad. Once we're below the speed of sound, I'll go with the parachute. Okay, we should be safe for parachute deployment. Parachute looks good. We are on the daylight side, we're all good. Sidri, out of all things, seems concerned now. Maybe it's the extra mass of the service module. Well, we can uh, dump that any time, Sidri. Or maybe it's the flop that might happen once we hit the water. That is a concern. No, the parachute won't hold it all. That's why we saved some liquid fuel and oxidizer for a touchdown. You want to decouple, or is that what you guys want? Oh shoot, I forgot the ISP of this thing. Great in the... Oh well. Okay, yeah, the ISP of the engine wasn't all that great. I forgot about that. Okay, um, hold on. That music isn't right. Let's bring Sidri back. Yeah, not only is the ISP bad, it's also the thrust that was way below what we needed. But anyway, we brought Sidri back. We got uh, recovery of a vessel returned from flight over Lathe. <laughs> flight. Uh, 57.6 science. Uh, so we got much funds, but I think we all want to know how much experience did Sidri get? Uh, there's only 77.6% a C, if you will. 44 XP advanced to level 5. Well, uh, obviously he was already at level 4. So, yep, Sidri. A legend among Kerbal kind now. Uh... What I've, now, if we're going to have a recoverable launcher now, I think we need these landing struts. And we could probably do with these drogue chutes as well. So yeah, I'm going to get this. Let's take a look at our contracts quickly. All we've got is a tourist contract. Build new orbital station around Val. Well, you should have told us that before. Explore Drez. Yeah. Splash down into the oceans of Leif. Well, we're not doing that yet. Uh, yeah, we're not doing that yet. We came awful close quite often. Temperature scans of Leif. They, they really like Leif now, huh? Orbital station on Gilly. That's gotta be a slow moving station. Okay, so clearly, uh, Doing station stuff will be something we have to do. Now, Gilly is interesting because a lot of our tourists wanted to go to Gilly, right? Land on Gilly, fly by Gilly. Well, okay, that one and this one wanted to do Gilly as well. Okay, let's take this Gilly contract as well. Okay. So, new launcher. So, we'll have to think about this. I'm going to use the Probodobodyne Octo as the root part, uh, just so that we can save it as a uh, subassembly later. And we want fairings this time, because people want fairings. So, obviously, we'll go for the largest fairings we can, 2.5 meter. And uh, I don't really want to build any sort of real. No. Land on Eve, wow. Yeah, well, we've got one of those. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, the tourist that wants to land on Eve, we'll have to we'll have to think carefully about that. Now, we've already got a mainsail SSTO launcher right there. So, 
we have to do something even more extreme, because that one can carry 9 tons, but that's not really enough for us anymore. I don't know, do you, do you guys think that'll be safe? All for snap, uh, we're not, we're not really snapping very well. Uh, d don't worry about it. I've got my own little workflow going here. Oh, these! Oh, right, you're right. Why didn't I think of that? Okay, um... Okay, fuel lines, of course. And we'll have much strutting to do first. So the reason I put it in three-way symmetry is because we want four mainsails. And... Looks like we should slide some stuff down. So, um, 426.9, uh, and we've got three of these. That should definitely work out. The only question is whether I've put enough fuel. Anyway, let me, uh, let me make sure it can land first. We don't have any of the big girder segments. We've only got these tiny ones. Ultimately, there's a chance that this is going to come to rest on its engines, but... Diminish the gimbals... Uh, yeah, well... By how much, I wonder. We need to do some aerodynamics on this. Uh, we also need to put an additional controller... We probably need a lot of reaction wheel. We need the parachutes. Do we have the 2.5 meter service bay yet? No, hold on. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, let me see if we can get the 2.5 meter service bay. Let's see, what else have you said? Meant by alt, uh, won't mount uh, radially or whatever. Yeah, I got that. I was just seeing whether it would work for something else. Uh, use the tail cones and the girder adapters to make it sleeker. Um, let's use the tail cones. Uh, I'll take a look at that. Uh, 40. Uh, for the gimbal, maybe. We're going to have to do some testing somehow. So, does anybody know where the service bay is? The 2.5 meter service bay? Oh, there's the bigger fairing. But we can't use that without the larger... Oh, there, uh, no. Yeah, there it is. 160 signs? Well, looks like we're gonna go for it. Yeah, the command pod's good. Uh, tail connector. You mean like these? Can, can the landing gear attach to those? Maybe. No, uh, Mikko, uh, I'm gonna be putting aerodynamic surfaces. Um, here, let me show you. Uh, not those. Where, uh, wing straight, yes. We're going to be doing stuff like this, but hold on a sec, let me slip the service bay in and the controller. So that controller is the root part, that's not where, where we're actually controlling it from. We're going to slip the controller in here. Anything else we should put in here? Well, definitely the elect uh, the batteries. I'm just gonna do the normal thing surrounding it with batteries. Hold on, let me check out uh, something similar to what Mikko is saying about the. I I'm gonna want air brakes. Yeah, but we won't deal with that just yet. Uh, so let's say tail connector. The tail connector is heavy though. How heavy is the? Yeah, tilt connector is heavy. We could try it though. So let's say we put this here and then put the... Let's say the girder adapter is too heavy. Hmm. But I have one other consideration. I want to be able to put fins on. Not that way. Not that way. Uh, 
Come on. I really don't want the strut jetting out, but... Okay. Mob prop soul panels inside there. Uh, I don't want the soul panels inside. I'm pretty sure they're gonna say that they're blocked by the service bay. Okay, how does that look? How did you do that with the offset tool? Uh, you mean uh, switching from... You probably mean uh, switching from uh, this version to the absolute. So this is absolute and this is local. The, you press F. You press F. These are not as heavy. Wonder if I should use the advanced nose cone instead of the tail connector. But they look stubbier. They'll look stubbier if I put it like this. And they won't extend as far down. At least I won't have to worry about procedural fairings this time. Uh, uh huh. Somebody's watched some uh, colonization there, I think. Control Z, yeah. Put more than one leg in each place. Mitko, uh, my problem is now I'm gonna have a lot of mass. I'm carrying a lot of dead weight. Uh, with these tail connectors, I'm gonna carry a lot of dead weight. I really don't want 12 fins. Uh, if I get rid of the fins off of here, maybe, but then the, these things and the girder segments are heavy. Um, tell you what, uh, this is pretty expensive, uh, but uh, let, let's focus on strutting and aerodynamics first. And then I will decide the rest. So, hold on. I want to see center of mass, center of lift here. Well, that's pretty obvious. But I want, I want a reserve tank. How do I even uh, get a re well? Yeah, ultimately the reserve tank is now currently. I mean, the tank that's last to deplete is tucked in here and is impossible to access. But that's all right. I just won't drain it. So I'm gonna assume all of our fuel is gone. And I'll see where the center mass goes. See, the center mass is very high still, and our center lift is down there. I need the center of lift to be right around here, so uh, so that uh, when it's coming down, the center of lift is going to be on the op opposite side. That way it won't flip around. Oh, I forgot to dump these tanks. Okay, well that's going to complicate things. So here's where those wing strakes come in. I don't like the look of this. Hello Tomasino, we're trying to design a new uh, reusable launch vehicle with four main seals at the bottom. Guess this is something like the DCX? Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess so, except thankfully we're working around Kerbin, so it's a lot easier. Yeah, more than one leg on each tail, okay. Well, still, well anyway, uh, it's still gonna be mass. But it'll be less, you're right. The couple bottom wings on return. Dump the bottom wings on return. Well, I don't know if putting them on decouplers will be a very nice thing for aerodynamics, but you're right, it does put the center of lift in the right place. But let's see now. Let me, let me just, I need to mark off where the center of mass goes. That's right, that's, that's pretty much center on the center of mass right now. Let me load it up again. There's this virtually no movement in the center of mass. Land or sea recovery, both. How would be if I put the streaks higher onto the white parts? It'll, it might look ugly, but my problem is the center mass just isn't moving enough. I guess it's possible. We, we could use the offset tool. I filled all the tanks. This is uh, full configuration. All the tanks are full. Oh, uh, oh, I, I forgot to dump these before, didn't I? Okay, so let me move this to all tanks full position.
But let's see, we need to raise the center of lift a little bit more. Let's try to do that. Well, that puts the center of lift in the right position now, but it's not going to move that much. Maybe I only need three of those. Let's see. Um, maybe... It's so tight. Anyway, let's see where it goes after I dump the fuel again. This time I'll remember to dump these tanks as well. There's only one fuel tank that's still filled, and that's the bottom tank on the center engine. Well, that'll do it. Oh, wait, I've got these attached. It's... <laughs> it doesn't get too much tighter on center of lift and center of mass than that, but... I think that'll do it. We better not carry too much more... We better not carry too much... Oh wait, we haven't put the parachutes on yet. Um, the parachutes will bring the center of mass up a bit. That's not great. What's the mass of this empty? 121 tons? Holy mackerel. Hmm, we gotta need a lot of parachutes. Not all the fuel dumped. Oh yeah, the slanted tanks, you're right. Well, that saves us a little bit. Yep, that's good. So what do we have? We have 12 there, 12 there. Total of 24 parachutes isn't going to be enough to save this thing. But we can use engine power. Too much symmetry. Okay, so that's an... Okay, well, now we need less... <laughs> now we need less of the lift. Let's, let's just move these back down. It's amazing. I love these wing strakes. They're magical. Okay. We can also take advantage of air brakes. And I want them the other way around, and I want them angle snapping. You'll notice I deliberately left this space for them. Yes. Oh, well, that's going to be blocked by that, that, uh, I guess those are pipes. Uh, our center of lift. Oh, the brakes. Oh, wow. That's a problem. Okay, that complicates things. Let me fuel it back up again. Maybe the brakes can be offset a bit to avoid the pipes. Yeah, maybe. Hope they don't catch any wind like that. Disable pitch or yaw on the brakes. Okay. Nope, didn't do anything. And unfortunately, that doesn't do symmetry. But we should have them inactive anyway. Why? What kind of symmetry is on these things? Anyway. But yeah, I didn't change the center of lift. It's just... I mean, of course, it's great for the way down. It's just a problem for the way up. I don't want to put big sort of delta wings on. I really like the idea of having these guys on. Maybe all assumes the brakes are deployed. Uh, we can hope. Um... So, I haven't calculated the delta V of this thing yet. I've got a lot of tanks. <laughs> uh, well, I guess uh, we should just do it manually. I don't want to calculate the delta V with all the tanks in. Uh, let's... 
let's just dump the fuel and figure it out. So I've got 435 here. Uh, let's put a payload on. Let's say uh, a jumbo fuel tank. Payload. And uh, I'm not gonna dump that. So 471. May test it in sandbox? Oh, come on. Now it's crossing above it? What happened? I've got something filled, don't I? Oh, uh, the payload, the payload. No, ignore, ignore. Payload, it's the payload. The payload will be released, doesn't matter. Okay, don't, don't pay attention to COM and COL now. Okay, 100 and 131. Um, this isn't enough Delta V for this payload. And we haven't even done the fairing yet. Well, let's see what kind of payload uh, would work. Let's say we've got this payload. 3,738. Hmm, this has less capacity than I wanted it to, that's for sure. It's got pretty good capacity, but it's got less than I wanted. Oh, uh, okay, that's fine. I think we should build a mission and try it out. 